Hey everyone, this is Nick, and one of the greatest strengths and weaknesses of the Linux desktop is the amount of distributions we have. It's a strength because it means anyone can get something tailor-made for their needs. But it's also a weakness because a lot of users just are perplexed by the amount of choice they're faced with when they try to move to Linux. Now, of course, we all know that this doesn't matter at all and beginners should just choose from one of the five most popular distros out there. But newcomers don't know that and they're a bit baffled by the amount of use case distributions that there is out there. So let's see why the very existence of these use case distributions mean that the Linux desktop might not be ready for the mainstream just yet. What's ready for the mainstream though is today's sponsor that I use for all my Linux and gaming server needs. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the best choice to deploy your own Linux or gaming server. Getting started is extremely easy thanks to their app marketplace. You can just pick from one of the many, many apps they offer, select a few configuration options and just one click deploy that server. It's super simple. It works for a development environment, but also for a Minecraft or Valheim server. Among the most notable apps, Linode has Moodle to create your own learning management system and teach and sell courses in minutes, but they also have stuff like Pi-hole to block ads. But please don't block mine because I need money to buy more games for the Steam Deck. From Focal Board, a Trello alternative to Rocket Chat, which is the equivalent to Slack or Teams, Linode has everything you would want. Click the link in the description to get your $100 credits and get started. Now, to begin with, what is a use case distro? Well, the Oxford Learner's Dictionary defines... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is not a high school essay. Pro tip, never begin anything with a dictionary definition unless you're writing a dictionary definition. So a use case distro is basically a more mainstream distribution with added tools and packages to make it more suitable for a specific purpose. They generally also include a different theme, wallpaper, name, but the internals are usually just the exact same as the distro they use as a base. And they differentiate themselves by trying to make a specific niche easier to get into when moving to Linux. Examples of these would be Nobara, the unofficial Fedora gaming version that adds Lutris, Steam, OBS Studio and Kden Live and a few tweaks to make some games run better. There's also Ubuntu Studio, which actually changes a lot more internals with a lower latency kernel and all the tools any creative might want. Whatever the domain they want to work on, audio, video, graphics design, anything goes really. All of these cater to a specific use case, whether it's gaming, audio, video, studio work, and they're not all equal. While some of them really do bring some interesting and needed stuff compared to baseline distributions, a lot of others just jam-pack their ISO with tons of applications and tools that will then come pre-installed and avoid the user a trip to the App Store to install them. And these use case distros, while they can serve a purpose, are a clear indication that Linux desktops just aren't completely ready or completely user-friendly enough. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that these use case distros are useless. Far from it. That's the beauty of Linux. People who actually know what they want to do can get a system perfectly tailored for their needs with the right kernel, the right tools, the right applications. For some people, using a mainline distro like Mint, Ubuntu, Fedora or Arch is a pain. Every time they reinstall, they have to grab all their apps again, switch kernels, install what they really need, remove what they don't. And it can be time consuming, even if you don't reinstall every two months. Not everyone has distro hopping madness, you know. Some of us do keep our installs for more than two months. These use case distros should not disappear. And I'm not saying they should be made obsolete or that their developers should all move on to work on more mainstream distros. After all, if they felt there was a need for their project and if they have users, then they're probably right. There is a need for specific distributions that cater to specific needs. But these distros also create issues. The first one is that they make users doubt what they should install by making the choice too complex between the run-of-the-mill distros that everyone recommends and the use case distros that might provide an edge. No, 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 not Microsoft Edge. Who would ship that by default in a Linux distro? Come on. The second issue is that if use case distros are needed, it means that the purpose they serve isn't well served by generic distributions. 
and that's a problem. Let's begin with the user confusion part, because we all know that Linux can be confusing at the start, even without 50 choices to pick from. Linux has always offered a ton of choice. It's not of its core values, but it's a byproduct of open source and free software that anyone can run with the code and make something else out of it. This means we already have tons of general purpose distros like Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, Elementary OS, Manjaro, and all their desktop variants. Choosing between these is pretty tough. They all offer a simple, stable, user-friendly experience, and the differences between them, besides their choice of desktop, color scheme, and defaults, isn't super evident at first glance. Is Ubuntu just orange Fedora with the side dock? Is Manjaro green Ubuntu? Or is that Linux Mint? Is Elementary OS just Mac OS, but for PCs that aren't Macs? Nobody knows. That choice gets even more confusing when you add distros with specific purposes. See, these distros try to cater to one use case specifically, like gaming or audio work. But rarely do new users focus on one single use case. People tend to use computers for a variety of stuff. I use mine for office work, for gaming, for video editing, for writing, for watching por What's another word that starts with por? Ports? I like watching ports. I watch ports on it. I love ports. What does a user choose then? If I'm a gamer, but I also like to read comics, and I need my computer for school, do I go with the gaming distro, not knowing if it's going to be capable of running other things I need? Do I go for the general purpose distro with the risk of having a worse gaming experience? If I don't already know about Linux, I could absolutely assume that a gaming distro isn't good for using an office suite, or that a non-gaming distro won't allow me to play games at all. After all, in the Windows world, you do not have that kind of difference. You have Windows, which is moderately good at everything. You don't have a Windows gaming spin or a macOS server spin. Okay, that one might have been too soon. They just canned that thing. Some people might compare use case distros to appliance OSs, like what you would find on a gaming console. It's an operating system. It just doesn't let you do everything the device would be capable of. That's highly confusing. And the fact that your choice has to be on the base, the color scheme, the desktop, the default applications, and now you also have to decide if you want a variant that's made for one of the use cases you need your computer for, that might just push users away, making them think Linux is only good for one thing at a time, when in reality your gaming distro will handle all your office needs perfectly, and a mainline distro will handle your gaming needs just as well. The second major issue is that the very existence of use case distros means that our mainline distros are still perceived as too complex for specific use cases. If you've used Linux in the past, you know that getting up and running with gaming, for example, isn't that hard. You just head over to your package manager, you install Steam, then look for Lutris and Heroic, install game mode, install Wine just in case, make sure that your GPU drivers are installed and up to date, install a few libraries for Vulkan to work, and then you can download all your games and play them. Wait a second, that doesn't sound easy at all. Yep, we long-time Linux users might perceive the various tasks we accomplish as extremely simple. It's just a couple packages to hunt for and install, nothing tricky. Except users coming from other operating systems don't know all these steps, because most of them are already done by the time they open their computers. On Windows, you don't have to install DirectX manually. It's installed when installing a game. Your drivers are generally already pre-installed as well, unless you manually install Windows, which no one really does. If you know how to install an OS manually, why would you install Windows in the first place, right? You also don't have to use third-party programs to run games. You just get the launcher for the game or the developer and you run that. In some ways, if you know what you're looking for, some of these steps are easier on Linux. You can get all your software from one single place instead of hunting for it online. What a barbaric way to download and install software, really. Imagine not using a package manager. And yeah, chocolatey and Winget, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. No regular user uses that or even knows they exist. Drivers are also in your package manager or app store or in dedicated utility. You do not need to go download them for the manufacturer's website. And Lutris lets you play games from all launchers instead of using three different ones. It can be easier if you know that you need all of this and that it's not pre-installed, but that's not the point. The point is, it's not easy. 
It might seem like it is, because we knew the previous ways, which were even harder. But to a newcomer, that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And that's why we have gaming distros. They come with everything pre-installed and pre-configured. You don't need to look for anything, you just log in and get started. Just like with studio distros, where you don't need to hunt for which apps you need to get creative. They're already all there, plus all the tools you need. So this means that our mainline distributions just aren't easy enough just yet for specific use cases and to get users up and running in no time. They still have to look for and hunt online for solutions and ways to do things they're already familiar with. And I would argue that this is an important learning experience to make sure that you understand what you're doing. But most people prefer when things just work. As long as these simple tasks can't be performed in seconds or are already done when the user gets their system installed, then use case distros will still have a reason to exist. So, what should be done? Should we all delete all the use case distros to force users to go to mainline distros and have limited choices? No, absolutely not. We need to make the standard better. And that's no easy task. It means that all basic drivers should be pre-installed when they're needed. Yes, that goes for NVIDIA drivers too. There's been a lot of progress on that front, but some distros still don't offer an option to download them at install and configure them immediately. Having to hunt for them in the software store is not a good solution. And if you don't want proprietary stuff on the ISO, just make the user download them from a repo at install by ticking a checkbox. It also means that we need more applications in these stores. Distros using traditional repos and packages need to package feature updates for applications. They need to include apps faster in their repos. Those using Flatpak need to include Flathub out of the box to make sure users have the wider range of apps available. And those using Snap need to keep burying their head in the sand, I guess? Nah, I'm joking. Mostly. And developers need to work to ensure that their apps, whether they're distributed in repos, in Flathub or the Snap Store, have all the correct permissions set to avoid users needing to use the command line or third-party utilities to give access to the home folder, for example. I'm looking at you, Discord. No file uploads by default because you don't have access to slash home. That's dumb. To solve the I need to download 20 apps each time I reinstall issue. We can also offer app bundles. In one click, get GIMP, Krita, Inkscape, or Steam, Heroic, and Lutris. One click install for bundles. Super useful and would definitely save some time. Also having some kind of account or user downloadable app list that you could import after you reinstall to get all your usual apps would be pretty useful. And finally, we could also work on helpers for people. For example, if you plug in a mouse that has configurable buttons, we could prompt the user to install the correct utility. Plug in a Logitech dongle, prompt to install Solar. We already do automatic printer configuration. We could expand that to other devices. If someone installs Steam, maybe make sure that everything needed for DXVK to work is also installed. If someone installs an audio program, maybe prompt them to switch to a low latency kernel. Or maybe let's ensure that the default kernel also works well for this kind of job. Basically, it all resides in ease of use. If the user feels guided, and if we automatically do things when there's 99% chance that the user would have to do that step anyways, then we've won. We're even more user-friendly than Windows or Mac OS. But until then, use case distros still have a good reason to exist. Our mainline distros should absolutely stand on their own and be able to fulfill all these niches perfectly well. And the people who want something super specific can actually still get it, because those use case distros aren't going anywhere. And today's sponsor isn't going anywhere as well. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, and they make Linux laptops and desktops. So they have Linux pre-installed out of the box with a wide choice of distributions, of keyboard configurations, and of general configurations. Their device range is huge. You have smaller laptops, bigger laptops, small desktop, big desktop, small NUCs, basically everything you might want to buy. Just head over to the link in the description below to find out what they have. For example, they just refreshed their Stellaris 15, which is their big 15-inch gaming laptop with 12th gen Intel CPUs and NVIDIA RTX GPUs. I reviewed the previous model, which has the same chassis, the same keyboard, the same awesome screen, and I loved it. So with even better internals, it's a no-brainer. So head over to the link in the description and check things out. 
Now thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, or whichever one you prefer. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast on Mondays and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover on the channel. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!